Hi there Aquarius, welcome to your weekly tarot reading. Um, you have some really good things coming into the picture I feel and uh, the first thing I'm getting here we have an offer that is long awaited and it's finally coming to into the picture. What I have here is the page of cups and this is text messages, communication, um, love offers coming through from another person. What I'm feeling from this card is um, I feel like somebody is testing the waters with you, okay? Um, I definitely feel like they, they've got a crush on you. And I also sense that they don't really know how you feel about them. So this is somebody that wears their hearts on their sleeves when they're upset, when they're frustrated, when they're... Um, when they're enamored, when whatever they feel, it shows up on their face. So you're, you're dealing with somebody who is very expressive. Um, you know, physically, they're, they're very expressive. They're also very affectionate. And I feel like they are disguising their feelings for you in uh, friendship. So they might put on an, uh, a front that they're, you know, trying to be your friend, not in a fake way, but I feel like they're... Uh, putting on a front like um, let's be friends, but then deep down. I feel like they they have feelings for you and They would like to explore it further and so I see somebody um, Coming in and you know asking do you want to do this? Do you want to get a cup of coffee? Do you want to look at this and talk about it? <laughs> um for some of you, it could be like a, a colleague at work. Do you want to get a cup of coffee? Do you want to um, go over this project that we're working on together? Um, you know, things like that. Do you want to get lunch for some of you? And then for others, it could be like a classmate, somebody that you're, uh, you see and they, they say hello and things like that. But I feel like this is the week where things um, become a little bit more solid, where they are moving and advancing towards you. The energy that you project is, I'm, I'm sensing many of you, you've been really, really hurt and disappointed in your love relationship. And I almost feel like, I almost feel like, you know, you, you keep people at arm's length, okay? You don't, you, you enjoy your own company. You're very, very independent and you hate waiting on other people. You just, you don't like waiting on other people. And so... You don't actively seek out crowds. You don't actively seek out other people. And I feel like for you, it's okay. You know, your energy is very contained. But I also feel like there is this, um, there's a sense from other people that they're trying to reach you. They're, they don't understand why you're so content being on your own. And they don't understand why you kind of, um, you know, shy away from friendships and social gatherings even, and they don't really understand how you can be so self-sufficient and, and content just being on your own, doing things on your own. And it's because you'd see the bigger picture. You've got things to do, plans to, to you know, formulate. And you know that life is not just about, you know, it's nice to have relationships and friendships, but you feel like life is about progress. We move forward, okay? And so if it comes, it comes. If not, I'm not going to sit around and wait for it. So I definitely feel like many of you um, are self-starters. You have uh, businesses that you're running. You have a lot of projects that you're dabbling in. You also have a lot of creative outlets. I see a lot of people working with their hands, molding things, drawing things, shaping things, composing things, writing things. So you've got a, a plethora of projects, creative ventures that you're dabbling in. So you don't need, you know, to bounce ideas off of another person. You don't really need a lot of people around you in order to feel not lonely, right? You, you don't feel lonely when you're on your own. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that. And a lot of people feel a little bit like threatened by it or they feel like you don't like them. So just, um, I would say, you know, aim to connect a little bit more. I feel like it'll be good for you and to also not um, create misunderstandings, okay? So I definitely feel like love and romance is, is really much the, the focus, okay? So 
I also feel as well there's communication、um, coming through from the past, from somebody who's having a lot of trouble letting you go, and this is somebody that you know, at, let's say four months ago, they were at a very low point in their life, and now things are are moving along for them. The wheel is turning for them. They're doing really well financially. They're really doing well emotionally and physically. They're taking better care of themselves. They're they're very balanced and they're they're reaching out to you, and I feel like they're trying to you know test the waters with you as well. But I'm also feeling at this point, you are you know closing off your heart to this person, and you're no longer going to be. You're no longer going to be. Feeding into that, okay. So for whatever reason, the relationship ended. It doesn't really matter at this point because you're no longer feeling it. But I feel like the other person is doing really well and they're happy and they're reaching out. And I feel like you're not going to be reaching back.、Um, what I'm getting as well is when it comes to finances, many of you are saving up. You're doing handling your money really, really well. And I also feel there's this energy where you are kind of beating yourself up over. Uh, I shouldn't have squandered my money in the past. You know, like for the past four years,、um, there there was a there were a lot of opportunities where you could have saved up, you could have stockpiled your wealth, and I feel like you might have wasted it on frivolous things, and you might have wasted it on you know buying things that you didn't need, just like frivolous spending, and you're at a point where you are taking charge of your financial situation. You're definitely shifting money around from checking the savings, and I also feel like you're really looking at a situation very carefully before you invest your money, or before you you actually make a big purchase. So down to the small purchases, I feel like big purchases, small purchases, you're being very very careful with your spending. I'm also feeling for some of you.、Um, there's this energy here about you know、um, like opposition, and I feel almost like growing up, it was really confusing to for you guys to kind of find a middle ground. Situations and people that were、um, situations that were very transformative. Or people that were very important to you, things have always been on the extreme ends of the spectrum. So, for example,、um, you might have like done work in one situation where it was very, very customer oriented. Customer is always right, and then right after that job, you shift it into another situation where the customer is never right. And so you dealt with really, really extreme ways of doing things, and I feel like it was the universe trying to teach you to find that middle ground, or at least you know one mentality is not always right. The other one was. It's like it's telling you that you know these ways of doing, ways of thinking were very, very extreme for a reason, so that you could find your own path, so that you could find that middle ground. And then I also feel like for some of you. Mom and dad.、Uh, one parent was really, really strict. The other parent was really lenient, or one parent was very, very neat and orderly and organized, and the other one was just a slob. And so you're dealing with all of these oppositions in your life, so that you can find that middle ground for yourself. You're dealing with these things, or these people, or these situations, so that it can teach you that you know. Things are not black and white. We need to learn to operate in the gray areas, in the areas in between, so that we could become a little bit more mindful of the things that we do, and that we can also come to a sense of understanding that one solution doesn't fit all people, doesn't fit all situations. Okay, one solution is not all encompassing. So I feel like. You're given the opportunities many, many times in your life through these interactions, so that you could learn to be a lot more flexible. And flexibility for a fixed sign is not an easy thing to come by. So I feel like you're being taught to, you have been groomed, 
and, and taught to be a lot more flexible, to look at a situation and apply, you might even need to apply different rules, different protocols, different ways of doing to meet that's the, the specific needs of that individual or the specific needs of that situation, whatever it calls for. So it, it's almost like everything is very context specific and we can apply one rule, one set of overarching rules to resolve the problem. Um, I'm also sensing as well, there's like a, a grandiose idea that's being formulated in your head. It shows up here as the Ace of Swords. This is like big plans, big ideas, scoping out new territory. But what I do feel here is it definitely involves the restructuring of the ways that you work. Okay, so the, the ways in which you earn money, the ways in which you, some of you could be self-employed, some of you could work under other people. But you're thinking and hatching out some type of plans for you to either change up the way you do things, think of a new way to even um, handle the workflow, and think of a new way to streamline your work processes because many of you are very efficiency oriented. Like you, you want things to be efficient. You don't want to spend too much time, wasting too much time on one specific thing. And so I feel like there is a, an, a big plan, a big idea coming into fruition that will allow you to streamline the, the things that you work and streamline the, the ways in which you work and the things that you do. I also feel as well, there's some major breakthrough when it comes to communication in your work environment. You're able to reach people. You're able to resolve problems for people. I see you kind of like playing the role of a consultant this week. People are coming to you and they're a little bit distressed and you kind of have to make sense out of the situation. So my advice overall is um, I feel like listen to what they have to say, but they're going to be coming to you a little bit frazzled, you know, like they're emotionally very, very up and down. And so you have to make sense of the situation for them. And you have to kind of like summarize very objectively what they're trying to achieve so that you can help them towards their goal, towards their path. So I feel like you're there to facilitate, uh, to, to bring insights into their situation because you're objective. And because they're emotionally so wrapped up in it, they don't really see a solution. So you're helping them in, in that way. I also feel as well some major, major uh, compensation, like a financial windfall coming through for many of you. Um, and I feel like it's going to be, you know, um, it's going to add to your coffers and it, it's going to be quite successful. Okay, so you have some really good news coming in on the financial front. I also feel as well opportunities to reconnect with family members and like I mentioned before if you've dealt with situations that were very very extreme people who are very very extremes with their opinions with their thoughts with the way that they do things and um, once again that opposite ends of the spectrum and trying to find that middle ground trying to be mediator you might even be called upon to to play the middleman and to be the mediator in a situation that might have been very contentious between family members I'm feeling as well, um, you know, your hangups regarding marriage, regarding relationships, a lot of it stems from the fact that you're looking at your parents' relationship, you're looking at other people who are close to you and their relationships. And I feel like for many of you, you might not even believe that marriage lasts. You might not even believe that relationships are meant to be forever. You might not even believe in like soulmate connections. But this is the week where you start to see that we don't have to be the same in order to work together. We don't have to be the same. You don't have to think like me. You don't have to act like me in order for, for us to fall in love. So your ideals, your visions regarding love and relationships are, are slowly softening and are slowly changing because you're starting to see that, you know, on a human level, we all have a lot of similarities. We don't have to be the same um, 
types of people to be uh, the same ideal match okay so i feel like you're coming into some really major awakening when it comes to relationships i keep getting pulled back to this card here the page of cups and um i definitely feel like for many of you relationships have been very very rocky for you guys especially since the summer time frame i'm seeing like the month of july it was a there was a lot of flirtation push and pull back and forth and yet the situation was um the situation just didn't pan out the way that you hoped and i feel for many of you you're like i'm showing my feelings i'm showing my heart why aren't they receptive why aren't they responding why aren't they you know reciprocating are they noticing it or what am I, what am i doing wrong so some of you are thinking um, that you're doing something wrong that there's some miscommunication or like what else do you expect from me so I'm, I'm seeing that energy and i feel like some of you are you know you're you're taking one step forward to reveal how you feel and then you're in a position where you feel slightly embarrassed and you're like oh no i'm i'm too vulnerable and then you take a step back so this constant um back and forth is what makes the other person feel like you're blowing hot and cold so if you're wondering you know what am i doing wrong what is the problem why aren't they seeing it i feel like that might be the issue so Give yourself a time frame. If there is somebody that you like, be very, very consistent with your effort. For example, if you're giving yourself a week, for that whole week, be very, very consistent with what you're doing. So take, keep moving forward. Don't take a step back. No matter how vulnerable, how exposed, how embarrassed you feel, just move forward. At the end of the week, you should have the results that you're looking for. Or give yourself two weeks to do that. And at the end of the two weeks, if you've been very, very consistent without taking that step back, you should have the result. So it's all about consistency. It's all about being okay with revealing your feelings, revealing your emotions, and not feeling like vulnerability is a bad thing. And not feeling like vulnerability um, makes us weak, okay? So I hope the reading resonates. I definitely feel like somebody is trying to reach out to you and they're looking for the right moment and they want you as well to stop um, blowing hot and cold with them. And I also feel like they have been very confused about where they stand with you. They've been very confused. So, and I feel like rightfully so, rightfully so they've been confused for good reason. And so it's it's really important to, you know, give yourself that time frame. I would say either a week, two weeks where you are consistent with your pursuit of the other person. And no matter what, don't backtrack so that they can see that you are being consistent with them, okay? Um I wish you the best, uh Aquarius. Take care of yourself and I'll be back next week. Bye-bye.